Hi YouTube, it's Joshua Miles and welcome back to my channel. Before we delve into this video, i just like to give a massive thank you to June's Journey for partnering up with me today to bring you this video. I've spoken about June's Journey on this channel before and as I said in my last video with them, I love this game so, so much. The game, which is set in the 1920s, is a hidden object mystery game where you play as a woman named June Parker. June's quest throughout the game is to solve the murder of her sister and in the process, inadvertently uncover her family's many dark secrets. The storyline lets you become the detective by finding hidden objects within June's journeys, beautiful, colourful and carefully crafted scenes. Get to the bottom of the murder, find all the clues and solve the case. And best of all, the game is free to download on both iPhone and Android. And you can even play it on your computer through Amazon or Facebook. I'm obsessed with this game through and through and I'm actually pretty embarrassed to uh, to take a look at how many hours I have put into this game. For me, it's just one of those things that I do when you know, it's time to relax and you just need to give yourself a bit of a break. It's not a very intensive game, so it's perfect for when you want to relax. So be sure to click the link at the top of the description or the link in the pinned comments. Download June's Journey and use your detective skills to solve the murder of June's sister. On today's video, we're actually joined by a really good friend of mine, Flinders, to help uncover the truth behind a pretty infamous piece of internet lore. Hey guys, I'm Flinders, if you couldn't tell. Thank you to Josh for asking me to be a part of this video and allowing me to discuss about one of my favorite internet mysteries, the game Kanye Quest 3030. On Monday the 22nd of July 2013, an 8-bit Pokemon style game was published on RPGMaker.net and it very quickly picked up a following with many many people praising the game. It was uploaded onto the RPG Maker website under the username of Phoenix. As you can infer from the game's title, Kanye Quest 3030, the game's primary focus is on hip hop slash rapper Kanye West. The plot of the game takes place in 2010 after the release of Kanye's album My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. You play as the protagonist Kanye West waking up in a Los Angeles apartment. The game has a comedic narrative as Kanye starts his day. One of the first tasks you are put to work to do is taking out the garbage. Though upon walking outside a portal suddenly materializes before you and you are pulled inside. On the other side of the portal, you find yourself in the year 3030, in the deserted city of San Francisco. This dystopian 3030 world is ruled by a evil clone of another really, really popular and famous uh, hip hop and rap artist, Lil B. Throughout the game, you encounter other iconic rap artists such as Jay-Z, MF Doom, Tupac and more, as you work your way through it, battling just like you would in Pokemon with other icons of rap and hip hop culture. At the end of the game, after teaming up with a whole bunch of clones, you ultimately kill the evil Lil B clone and his soul returns to Earth. Then Kanye just wakes up and turns out the entire game was just a dream. The game ultimately ends with Kanye stood on a stage with a giant gold cross behind him shouting I am God in 2013. Kanye Quest 3030 received a lot of media attention primarily due to the fact that it was an unlicensed Kanye West game that was funny, it was fun to play and it kind of was a real hit for uh, online gaming and hip-hop uh, news websites. Thousands of players downloaded the game and played it almost obsessively until they finished. It was overall a hit and it seemed for the most part to just be a fun and harmless game. That was until two years after its release. On the 28th of January 2015, an anonymous user posted a text file to the text sharing platform Pacebin and then shared this link onto the subreddit r slash creepy gaming. This text file would unearth conspiracy theories from within the Kanye Quest 3030 game 
of a cult recruitment program, human trafficking, and even the New World Order. This morning, I played Kanye Quest for the first time in forever. I never played past maybe five minutes of it the first time before quitting for two years, so I decided to really sit down and play it. In the game, there are based information systems that tell you how to play, tell you your current task, tell you to praise a little B, etc. In the first future area of the game, Bay Area 3030, you can walk into an abandoned building and find a trashed base info system. It's a semi-comprehensible, it's semi-comprehensible, but the majority of its letters in the messages are swapped with periods and backslashes. I hit view current task on it and it showed a message that said, After thinking on this for a minute, I realized that it said, ascend and worship the base god. And I thought, oh cool, fluff messages, and just kept walking. Base god is actually the name of Little B's alter ego. Um, in real life, that's like his alter ego is part of his stage persona. Uh, but don't forget that Little B within the context of this game is an evil clone that has taken over the world. And within the game, there are people, uh, characters that view this evil clone of a Little B as um, a god, the base god, and they worship them. And these characters within the game are called the base god task force cultists. Later on, you meet a base god task force cultist in the streets who randomly asks you, what do you want to do? You're given a six blank space prompts where you can put in any character. And for shits and giggles, I put in Ascend. After which the game takes a sudden turn from comedic hip hop battles to something much, much more sinister and much more suspicious. You are instantly taken to a new place and the atmosphere of the game has changed drastically. Text then appears on screen and it reads, Congratulations, you have proven yourself to be an open-minded and curious thinker. We apologize for deceiving you, but we can reveal that the game you were playing until this point was a front, constructed to protect what you're currently accessing. We must ask you that you do not reveal this area to the public. If you believe that you may be prone to revealing information or do not wish to participate, please close the program immediately by pressing OF4 or selecting the No option when it appears. By selecting the yes option, you agree to participate and not reveal information. The game doesn't reveal what you're agreeing to participate in, and it remains really vague and secretive. So when you select the yes option, the game proceeds and reads, The following is a thought exercise designed to help teach you something beneficial. By undertaking this exercise, you will hopefully be affected in a positive way. Due to the nature of the exercise, this something cannot be revealed immediately. This exercise may or may not be restricted to the software. It is important to remember that the purpose of this exercise is to benefit you. You will not be timed. We cannot provide any more information except we wish you good luck. You may begin now. Welcome to your ascension. Once you're done with that, instead of playing as Kanye West, you are now a small little white butterfly. The room that you're placing has an exit at the bottom. If you pass through this exit, it shows a giant QR code that is too big to fit the screen, so you have to go around it to collect images, sew them together so then you can get the final result of the QR code. However, when you scan this QR code, it seems to be that the link is dead. The main section, however, seems to be a pyramid shaped with a bunch of consoles that you can then interact with, and these consoles are named in different Roman numerals. Each console requires you to enter a password, and each console has a separate password itself to be able to activate them. Once you activate one layer, the next one opens up, and so forth as you go up the pyramid. As you work your way up the pyramid in the game, the game seems to get darker and darker to almost pitch black until you reach the last one, which is console 33. Once you activated that console, you are then instantly teleported to a completely white room with one single console, console 34. This is where it gets interesting. This console congratulates you for getting this far and asks for your personal information, such as your full name and your address. Afterwards, it thanks you for the final time and tells you that there is going to be contact within the next two weeks. The keyword that kind of stands out from this is clearly ascension, or rather ascensionism. 
But what exactly is Ascensionism? According to a post on the website Aliens at Our Doorstep, Ascensionism is promoted globally as a spiritual path or experience. It is in fact a religion. It is a mechanism of controlling those that believe in it by manipulating what they accept as truth and as being right. But this religion justifies harming the innocents with the arguments that their souls agree to be harmed in various ways for the sake of spiritual growth or involvement. It's commonly believed that Ascensionism is less a organized religion and more just a full-blown cult. This new age cult dates back to the earliest online record to at least 2006, where a Wikipedia article mentioned it as a religious movement, stating that human beings can transcend their current limitations and that doing so is a sacred right and duty of a human being. Not that much information is actually freely available on the internet, with the best way of finding out more information about Ascensionism uh, is by joining the cults. The only true way to find out more is to become a Ascensionism cult member. I love you guys and I would do a lot of things in the name of research for this channel, but that is definitely where I draw the line. I am not joining a cult. There is a single paged website which is really, really long and detailed, describing a lot of different aspects of Ascensionism. And I believe that this single page website is written and authored by the exact same person who wrote the post on Aliens at Our Doorstep, and this person's name is Vanessa. Though we'll come back to Vanessa later on in this video because she does play a significant role in the uh the ending of this case. According to that same text file that was shared on Pastebin that we discussed earlier, apparently, Orthodox Ascensionism believes that all souls, before combining with the spirit of the body, form packs with the souls of all beings that they will encounter into the future. This leads to the Ascensionist belief that any harm done to a person was agreed upon prior by their soul during a contract signing with the other person's soul, and that they were quite literally asking for it thus justifying any harm they can perpetrate against people. They also believe that if a person is cloned, their soul is split into two parts, and as such, they do not truly die until the clones are dead, because any soul from a dead clone or originator will just wander until it finds another clone with the same host spirit and will combine with it. This is bad to Ascensionists. They believe that if a soul lives on for too long, it becomes corrupted by the bad circumstances it has accumulated and will become evil and twisted over time because they cannot be purged of their experiences by death to start anew. They believe that these souls become evil and wander between clone to clone and they even become the shadow people that you sometimes see in the corner of your eyes. According to them, there is an ancient group of about nine or so people who have lived for massive spans of time by cloning themselves repeatedly and indefinitely, and their clones are what constitute the majority of the shadow people seen today. This goes back to the plotline of the game, where all the evil characters were continued clones of rappers who had accumulated evil by being alive for so long and never truly dying, while the good characters, aside from Kanye, were clones that had been dormant for so long that they couldn't accumulate the bad energies gained through experience. The anonymous user that pasted this text file on Pastebin references posts made by Vanessa as his source for all this information. There's no uh, other referencing to any more information by a different author besides that Wikipedia page that I mentioned. Though, as I said earlier, we're going to come back to Vanessa later on in this video. So how does Ascensionism tie into the Kanye Quest 3030 video game besides its use of the clones? After all, it could just be a coincidence that there are clones in the Kanye game. I mean, clones are very common, especially within video games and within the sci-fi uh, genre and fantasy genre so it wouldn't be weird um, or a drastic link that you could draw for there to be clones in the game. There is only a brief occurrence of sentientism with 
in the actual game itself, with many subtle indicators that could go unnoticed by the average player. For example, the official trailer of the game was released on YouTube 20th July 2013, but this trailer seems like a normal advertisement for a game. It includes a fair amount of gameplay and quotes from game reviewers that praise the game, so it seems like a pretty normal trailer for a small little indie game online. That's until the end of the trailer, where the game title is shown on screen and turns into a black screen. When this black screen is showed, Morse code is seen to be heard and there is a few split seconds of frames where the Ascensionism logo is slapped on. Also interesting that this was the first time you get to see the logo in any of the game trailers. For example, going back to the first trailer where it was published on May the 4th, 2013, and there was no correlation with Ascensionism whatsoever. A beta trailer was then released on 8th of June, 2013, which just like the alpha trailer, didn't really have any signs of Ascensionism as well. It wasn't until the third trailer, the game's official release out of alpha, out of beta, where you really get to see the presence of the cult. Two days after the trailer was uploaded, the full version of the game was eventually released, and this full release version of the game had little hidden insides in it. These hidden secrets and other clues were definitely hints of ascensionism. Another one is that in this starting menu of the game, there is a piano version of My Beautiful Dark Twist Fancy opener, Dark Fantasy. In this audio between it, there is a quick little section where it goes quiet and Morse code starts to play. This is the same Morse code that's in the trailer and it spells out Ascend. Afterwards, the song then continues like nothing happened. And strangely, it wouldn't be that until the text files were anonymously posted on Pastebin, people would start putting two and two together and find out something a little bit more sinister than just a game. Another tie to mention a little bit of symbolism is, for example, when you're playing the Ascension part of the game and you're playing as the small little white butterfly. This butterfly can signify the belief of Ascensionism on how a caterpillar can cocoon up and then turn into a butterfly like it has Ascended. As a part of our extensive research into the theory of the cult recruitment lied deep in within the Kanye Quest 3030 game, we decided that it would only make sense if we tried it ourselves. After hours of searching, we finally stumbled upon the game files, we booted up, turned on screen record, and joined a Discord call while we are playing Kanye Quest 3030. As we went into the game, our main focus was pretty much trying to find the hidden cult room ourselves, and safe to say, it did feel very eerie when we were going through the pyramid ourselves. When we finally entered into the pyramid room, we quickly freaked out from the really weird, creepy, abstract type music, with just bells constantly bashing. I did not like it. Neither did Josh. We hate it, we muted it. It was really simplistic with a constant bell drowning out the audio with a piano scale every now and then. With the first issue, we found ourselves facing the fact that we didn't know any passwords to the consoles. Thankfully, the text files in the paste bin contained all the passwords we needed in literal order where we can just progress easily. As we typed in these passwords into each console, the drowning bell noise really annoying so we kind of had to turn that down a little bit. Eventually, we finally managed to get to console 34 and as we predicted from our research, the console asked us for some private details. I decided to go brave enough and put in my legal name and my address word for word. Because why not? In hindsight, it's pretty stupid. I definitely was a little bit anxious. I still am. I was pretty stupid either way to do it, but curiosity. I was pretty intrigued. Once I put the info in, nothing really happened apart from the console telling me that I will be contacted in the next two weeks. For most, that was the last mention of Ascensionism with no word of coming about. There have though have been other interactions with what is believed to be the alleged Ascensionism cult. Other interactions include a public Twitter account that has been replying in the past to a very select number of people. However, there hasn't really been any information about these people coming out apart from one. Those direct messages were leaked to the public, and since the leak, the account seems to be gone, disbanded, inactive from the actual cult itself. Presumably, all other accounts for the cult from other social medias have gone. As with information to exactly what the Ascensionism cult is, there's no real information on how to actually join Ascensionism, unless you are a part of it. Just as with the cult social media accounts, the Kanye game also just 
disbanded and left the face of the internet. The last record of Kanye Quest 3030 being available for download on RPGmaker.net was the 11th of April 2016, some three years after the anonymous uh, text file was uploaded to Pastebin, exposing its alleged cult. Although the game's Tumblr blog was actually active until the 23rd of February 2018 before it was deleted. The blog remained deleted for about a month before the next known record of the URL being the 26th of April 2018. Though instead of being able to access the blog, it is now password protected and it remains that way to this day. Though whether the blog is being run by the Ascensionism cult um, is up for debate. Many people believe that they don't run the blog anymore. In fact, whether it was actually the cult running any of the social media for um, ascensionism is also up for debate. Within recent years, people who have been following this case uncovered a music publishing company called Ascension Records. Not only did the name align with the ascensionism within the Kanye game, it also used the exact same logo that was flashed at the end of the Kanye Quest 3030 release trailer. Ascension Records also had a Twitter account where they would tweet what appeared to be gibberish. A lot of people immediately began to draw connections connections between Ascension Records and the Ascension cult hidden within the Kanye game. Though I personally don't believe that there is any real connection between the two, I don't believe that the original developer for Kanye Quest 3030 is responsible for Ascension Records or any of the social media that is still active today. Flinders and I decided that the best way to get to the bottom of what is actually going on in this case would be to get a hold of the game files, take them apart, decompile them, unpack them, and take a look at what is going on behind the scenes. I set to work decompiling and unpacking the game files, and after a few hours of hard graft, I was able to get access to the source code. This not only allowed us to see what was actually going on behind the scenes in terms of the code, but it also allowed us to take a look at any metadata for any of the files, which if you don't know, means uh, that we are able to see when a file was created, when it was last modified, and a little bit of information like that. And upon examining all these files, the code and the metadata and everything together, I was able to determine several key pieces of information. Firstly, and thankfully, the code concerning the last terminal in the pyramid uh, section of the Ascension part of the Kanye game, where it asks you to enter your personal details, we know for a fact that the game does nothing with those details. It simply asks you for the details, you put them in, and then it discards of them. It doesn't save them locally, it doesn't upload them anywhere, it just is kind of pointless for what it does. Something more interesting that I discovered whilst taking a look at the source files was some timestamps on a bunch of the code. And after adding these timestamps to the timeline of events that occurred in the game's development, it's easy to draw one simple conclusion. Before we get to that conclusion though, let's go through this timeline. It's important to note that alongside the game being published to RPGmaker.net, there was also the Tumblr blog, which we mentioned before, which was used um, by Fenix to publish updates of the game's development. We know that the blog now is deleted, but thankfully archive.org allows us to go back in time to take a look at the blog. The first post on the blog was on the 21st of April 2013, and all it showed was a teaser, a screenshot from the game of Kanye's house. We know from looking at the source files from the game that a particular audio file, which is very important within this timeline, was created the following day on the 22nd of April 2013. The audio file was titled Dark Fantasy 2, and it plays quite a significant role within the game, and quite a significant significant 
part of the law to do with this case. Over the next two days, the 23rd and 24th of April, another blog post is made and the Kanye Quest 3030 promo banner image is first uploaded to an image sharing site. So far this timeline is fairly boring and not much is really going on with nothing pointing at all towards ascensionism or ascending or any kind of hidden cult or anything like that. I also have to quickly point out that Dark Fantasy 2 is just an 8-bit version of one of Kanye's tracks. On the 24th of April 2013, an account was created on the website rpgmaker.net under the user of Phoenix. This is the first time that Phoenix appears within the indie game community. And we know from this profile that he created on RPG Maker that he is uh, a boy, or at least that's what he's saying is he says he's male on the profile. Whoever Phoenix is has done a really, really good job of covering his identity. Two more days pass before anything else really happens. Phoenix posts on the Tumblr blog about how Kanye Quest 3030 is for an upcoming Release Something Weekend event, which is an occasional event held on RPGmaker.net, encouraging indie game developers to release what they're working on. Phoenix then largely goes quiet until the 4th of May 2013, when he uploads and posts the first trailer for the game, the a trailer for an alpha version of the game. If you're unfamiliar with how typical game development releases work, there's usually three stages, alpha, beta, and release release, um, where alpha is like the earliest stage of the game, it's bare bones, it's kind of more of a proof of concept, it usually has quite a lot of bugs in it. Beta is a more stable version of the game, but it's not quite complete yet, and then the final release is the final version of the game, usually. Almost immediately after this alpha trailer was published, the game started to gain some media attention. A blog dedicated to discovering new indie games called Indie Game Hunt published a short segment about the alpha game, with the author describing their excitement for its eventual release. This is quite an important moment within the game's development because it's the first time that Phoenix ever receives some hype around his game and some attention from people outside the RPG Maker community. Uh, it's the first piece of media attention that he gets. And like a lot of people would, this media attention sparks motivation within Phoenix to keep working on his game and keep developing everything. Subsequently, on the 12th of May 2013, the alpha version of Kanye Quest 3030 was published on RPG Maker, available for anybody to download. Initially, there were only a few downloads of the game and it didn't receive all too much attention, but nonetheless, still thriving from the previous media attention, Phoenix kept developing and released two more alpha versions of the game on the 22nd of May and then on the 1st of June. Over the course of the next two months, Phoenix's game would gain substantial traction and it would ultimately secure its place in internet lore history. On the 4th of June 2013, a news article was published that changed everything for this game, and it was published on Kotaku.com. The author in this article praises the game, mentioning how fun the battles and the storyline is. The game was then picked up by four more news websites the following day, XXLMag, Mashable.com, HipHopDX, and ConsequenceOfSound.net. All the articles praise the game for its humour and its storyline, its creativity and its originality. And that's despite the fact that the game was completely unlicensed. A media catalyst then erupted with article after article being published across gaming and hip-hop websites across the internet. Downloads soared to above 10,000 downloads. On the 8th of June, Phoenix posted a trailer for the beta version of the game, which, as I said earlier, is a more stable version of the game. And two days later, on the 10th, the beta version was then made available to download. In the days following, articles about the now beta version were posted on trendhunter.com and liveforlivemusic.com. By the end of the month, and now with a small cult following, Phoenix posted posted the second version of the beta edition of the game. And this is where I believe everything began to change in the game's development. This is the pinnacle tipping point. Before this point, there were no mentions of ascensionism, ascending, occult, anything suspicious. 
within the source code or on the blog or on Phoenix's profile or on anything to do with, with the game. There was no mention at all um, of any of those things before this point. Luckily, a few people actually played the alpha version of the game and they recorded it and posted it on YouTube. Um, and we were able to look at this playthrough um, and we could analyze it because the alpha version is not available for download anymore. We could analyze it, go through it, this playthrough and it's easy to tell that the elements where Ascensionism is present in the full release version of the game is not in the alpha version. On the 16th of July, the audio file we discussed earlier called Dark Fantasy 2 was replaced in the game files with a different audio file titled Dark Fantasy 3. The music between the new audio file and the old one is identical besides one small segment of Morse Coes. The Morse code plays after the one minute mark in the track, and as you can hear, it's pretty spooky. On the 20th of July 2013, the infamous Kanye West 3030 release trailer was published to YouTube. The trailer had a sudden flash of the Ascensionism logo and the Morse code, which when deciphered translates to Ascend. The very next day, on the 21st of July, a new audio file was added to the game's source code, and this audio file was titled Ascend. The audio file is the background music that you hear when you're in the uh, ascend part of the game, when you're in that pyramid with all the terminals. It's the music you hear on that level. The ascend levels were also added to the game in July 2, though it, I was unable to exactly pinpoint when exactly they were added, but we know that they were added um, in July. On the 22nd of July 2013, the full release version of the game was made available to download by the public on RPGMaker.net. Three days later, Phoenix would conduct his only interview ever about the game, and he conducted that interview with the Jace Hall Show. The interview is fairly standard, though there are two parts that really stand out to me. When Phoenix is asked what the main draw besides hip hop there is to the game, he replies, I would presume that many people are attracted to the game's philosophically enlightening content in the hope that they can change their lives for the better, at least temporarily, by playing this game. This without the knowledge that would come out two years later about the ascensionism hidden within the game would just sound like a an answer from a guy who takes his game development job really seriously. Phoenix is then asked about how he felt about gamers in the community writing the game off as a joke, and his response is exceptionally creepy knowing about the ascensionism hidden in the game. To any who have strayed from the path to enlightenment, I forgive you. Do not be afraid to ascend and take on your true form. This is the first and only mention directly of ascend from a Phoenix. That same day, an article about the game was posted in the Rolling Stone magazine, causing even more attention to be drawn to the game. And around this same time, Phoenix also updated his profile on RPG Maker to contain the Morse code that, when decrypted, spells Ascend. One further bug fix update was pushed for the Kanye West game during August by Phoenix, but after that, Phoenix went quiet. In between the two year period from when the game was released fully and when the anonymous text file was posted on Pastebin discussing the ascensionism within the game, nobody cottoned on to what was going on inside the game. Many people believe that Phoenix is a recruiting agent for the ascensionism cult or perhaps even a human trafficker. But knowing what I've told you, I do not believe this to be the case at all. I think Phoenix realized that his indie game was taking off and it was suddenly getting the surge of media attention, but I think he was also smart enough to know that that media attention would soon die down as the next thing came along. So using games like Slenderman and SCP-087B, which are both very successful horror slash creepy games released towards the end of 2012, and were also very popular at the time that Phoenix was developing his 
game. Using those games as inspiration, Fenix created a plan to have a bit of fun and to create a bit of a legacy within his game. Ascensionism didn't really exist on the internet prior to the Kanye West game, Though, on the 12th of March 2013, a month before Fenix would start working on the Kanye West game, what would become the third best-selling game of 2013 was released, God of War Ascension. It would have been a strong possibility that Fenix, as a game developer, would uh, have known about this game, and it would have been likely that he probably had paid, played it at some point. It's important to note that one of the game mechanics within this God of War game includes Phoenix Feathers, so it could be hypothesized that Phoenix took his name, his username inspiration from Phoenix from the game if he did play it. It could also be possible or plausible to suggest that due to the name of the game, God of War Ascension, a lot of people would have been googling stuff like, what is Ascension? Like, what is what is ascensionism of course this is obviously just a hypothesis a theory it's not fact um and it's quite loose because there's obviously no substantial evidence but um together it, it does kind of paint a picture of how this might have come about either way at some point fenix stumbled upon the blog posts the different blogs created by vanessa in these blogs which we mentioned earlier in this video vanessa explains ascensionism and ascending and ascension masters in vivid detail going into depth about them in ranty blog posts. And she discusses the religion that allegedly surrounds it. She even mentions an encounter she had with a ascensionist. It is my personal belief that Phoenix added ascensionism into the game as an easter egg and as just a bit of a, a bit of a joke though after two years of waiting for someone to stumble upon it or put the pieces together um, and nobody doing that, he decided to take it into his own hands and anonymously upload this paste bin file and share it onto Reddit so that it could start to gain traction. I do believe that Phoenix was behind the anonymous text file posted on Pastebin. After all, this text file contains all the passwords for every terminal in that pyramid section. Um, it also contains information about um, the QR code link and it contains information that you couldn't otherwise really know unless you knew more about what was going on behind the scenes of the game. Phoenix references Vanessa's blog posts in this text file on Pastebin, though it seems that he didn't really read what she was talking about or take a look at what she was saying properly. Within the Kanye game, ascensionism is portrayed as this cult, though in Vanessa's blog posts, which I spent way too long going through all her blogs, reading everything, very interesting stuff, difficult to understand at times, but very interesting stuff, but in, in Vanessa's blogs, she talks about how ascensionism and ascending is all just a a loose branch of Christianity. As I said, I believe Phoenix posted a link to this post bin on the Creepy Gaming subreddit so that people could, you know, read it through, try it out for themselves and be like, whoa, this is so weird, and then start talking about it again and create some kind of legacy for the game, a piece of internet lore. And luckily for Phoenix, this works and he was very successful. Video after video, Reddit post after Reddit post, conspiracy after conspiracy were all made surrounding Kanye Quest 3030, including this video. Everybody was discussing the alleged cult hidden within the Kanye game. It, there were news articles about it and it's still being discussed to this day. At the start of 2018, we know that the original Kanye Quest blog was deactivated and I know for certain that that blog was deactivated for good. And we know this because of a reblog from the Kanye West original Tumblr blog. And in that reblog, it lists the URL that it was reblogged from, and it still says to this day, um, Kanye Quest with a dash deactivated, which if you've ever used Tumblr before, you know that that is only used when a blog is fully deactivated. And when you reactivate a blog, um, that goes away, it just comes back. Somebody else took the URL for their own Tumblr blog and hijacked the mystery behind the Kanye Quest game. And they turned it into some kind of ARG, augmented reality game, um, which then, you know, a lot of people now to this day, they um, 
they are playing this ARG and it goes really, really deep, um, including Ascension records and phone numbers and other things like that. It's all surrounding Ascensionism. It's a really good ARG, but it's not my belief that this ARG be is being run by Phoenix or the original developer. It's definitely being run by somebody else who saw the um, popularity of Kanye Quest, the popularity of the mystery, and decided to turn it into something. Ultimately, this alleged cult hidden within a Kanye West game is simply just a practical joke played by the developer that got out of hand. An effort from Phoenix to get his game into the internet lore history books, and it worked, so props to him for that. For my personal opinion on this subject, it's a hoax. Originally meaning to mock the conspiracies about Kanye West himself being a part of the Illuminati, this ended up becoming something that was really well done, and especially in the sense of the actual connection with the cult. A good example of it is the wording of the Ascensionism part of the game. It ties in really well with the whole optimistic ideology, with the cult's belief and the symbolism of ascending. The person behind the game must have wanted to add a little bit more to the game as it was generating hype to keep a little bit of a law. This has definitely worked when the conspiracy was brought up on years later, and the person who gave the information was probably the creator themselves, who got an alternative account on Reddit and Payspin and anonymous accounts to go and spread the secret little easter eggs of the game. They probably did this years later because they got kind of fed up that no one really caught on to the easter eggs and the buzz was slowly starting to die down from the game. It's a pretty it's a pretty interesting case since I am a personal really big fan of Kanye West and a gamer myself. For this to be a fan made game from our competition then leading on to a conspiracy with a very dark twist in the end is something that I like and I like to believe that this helped games from putting just not that much information and not that much lore and hidden secrets to the games to really dive into detail for their own games and create a much better experience for the players. And that's everything that we have for you in today's video. Make sure you let us know your theories or anything in the comment section down below. I'd be really interested to know. Don't forget to jump over to my official subreddit to discuss this case over there too. You can actually find a link to download the Kanye West game source files and the Kanye West game in my source if you wanted to deep dive and take a look yourself. There's also links to everything that I'm I've spoken about in this video there too. You'll need RPG Maker VX Ace, um, a piece of software, to actually be able to open the source files and take a look. And to run the Kanye West game, you do need RPG Maker Ace RTP, the runtime program, which is freely available online. Um, but with those, you'll be able to play the game and you'll be able to explore it. Again, and thank you so much to June's Journey for teaming up with me and Flinders to bring you this video. Be sure to put your detective skills to the test by clicking the link at the top of the description or the pinned comment to download June's Journey for free today. Thank you also to Flinders for helping me cover this case and dive deep. We've had days long discord calls going, in, going on into the early hours of the morning searching for more and more things to do with this case. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this coverage of it. Be sure to jump over to his channel, hit subscribe and give him some love. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well if you want to see more true crime content. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified every single time that I post a brand new video. Follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. And with all that being said, I'll see you in the next case.